Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Bell Falls Village Trustee Regular Meeting. It's Tuesday, May 24th, 2022, and 632. So our location is in down in the maybe cursed town hall lower theater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, and uh, I like to call the meeting to order. We need to first order business approve the minutes of Tuesday, April 26, 2022. I'll move approval. A second? Second. Okay. Any um comments or information on the minutes or everybody good with them good okay hearing none all those please um signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. yeah roll we're roll supposed roll. to do a roll call so jigs aye jeff aye aye we're supposed to actually see our names deborah right aye wait in the shore aye. okay right. now that we got through that one we'll get that okay uh, any additions to the agenda for routine administrative matters and or pressing matters that will require a ratification at a future meeting? No, nothing this evening. Anything else? Hearing nothing. Moving on, any public comment? You see there's a couple of people in the public evening. Maybe they're here for something else. Okay. Hearing none and seeing none, um, we'll move on to the manager's report. Thank you. So the uh, couple things, just sort of community-wide interest. So. The Bellows Falls Union High School class of 2022 was asked to do a parade after graduation. Um, typical parade route that everybody understands. They'll do two times around the square, basically. Starting around 745, they should be done hopefully by 830 or so. Um, that's on Thursday the 16th. That's when graduation is. Yeah, 16th. It's um, <coughs> typically we'll have some public safety support for that event and for the most part people understand how to behave and it, it tends to go off without too much of a disruption although sometimes it can get a little loud at times and people get a little excited and horns and what have you so this is an fyi the uh, final grade is done on 66 atkinson street i'm sure you've noticed activity over the last week or so over there um, so we put in the fill we have the final elevations and seeded the, the site. Um, at the last select board meeting, there was a conversation with the Bellows Falls Trades uh, folks about doing a potential lease. The, the board was uh, potentially interested in going forward with the proposal. So sometime over the summer, we'll work on some potential lease terms. And at some point, there might be a lease that will be appearing back on an agenda for some sort of action, probably by the fall, in order to see if that's uh, acceptable to both parties so that's currently um, sort of in the to be determined stages uh, you should see hopefully soon some activity at uh, nine barker the first phase of that pro uh, project will be to do some additional asbestos removal and then you'll see demo hopefully following fairly soon afterwards um, so that will be um, I think for that neighborhood and certainly for anybody that's driving, you know, through that part of town anyway, it's sort of a, a visual that'll be um, nice to have that structure down and that site cleaned up. Um, that's the last of June. We're hoping to have it done probably end of June, maybe early July, because we're trying to bid it out with some of the other work that we're doing at the um, at the FEMA uh, removal from that <coughs> sits on mm -hmm. that's basically sliding down the hill. So. We're seeing if we can get a two for one on that deal. Um, and that has to be done, I think, by the end of the month in July. So we're hoping to get that done fairly quickly. And we're going to start some staff training. Um, VLCT has a, um, a subsidized program that they offer for security awareness training about fishing, which is one of the mm -hmm. primary issues, especially with municipalities, in terms of how people get in and create mischief in our networks so it has some basic training it also has some higher level uh, training so that if there are phishing emails they can be um, 
turned around basically and, and uh, used for training purposes so that they're not dangerous to the network, but it does show people real specific examples of how people try to get in and ultimately can you know, really create chaos in the network. So um, we were doing that training hopefully sometime in June and it'll go. Um, and then we'll have some follow up to that as well. There, there's a period of time where we have this uh, this monitoring that will go on afterwards as well. So it's another layer of protection. You know, as we talked about, you know, we have been um, like like most communities or municipalities, you know, we were a target for that type of activity. And unfortunately, some communities in Vermont have experienced some real financial losses because of that. So. Um, it's good training for the staff, it's good awareness, and then ultimately it's a good practice just for, you know, going forward, trying to at least avoid as much as possible that type of a problem here. So that'll be going on in the gym as well. Okay, anything else? That's it. Okay, great. Moving on to the agenda, our first item is the review of the 2022 annual meeting options for increased voter participation. Um, because of the co of COVID issues, where we, we thought, well, we're going to have a, have a meeting a week ahead of, of Voter Day, um, we had a lot of people citizens saying they didn't hear about the meeting, they didn't know what was going on, didn't realize um, both, the, both the annual meeting and um, Voting Day. They'd come by the temple and they'd see somebody and say, oh, it's not on today. You know, um, we really do need to increase participation. It's gone down every year, and not just because of COVID. It was doing it prior to COVID, um, twenty one and twenty two, uh, excuse me, twenty twenty one. But um, as I recall, there is a banner in the fire station that I bought some years ago for exactly that purpose, and we should be using it. And because we do need to oh, to get our numbers up, as, as we are going to stay to the traditional door vote. Um, we need to find ways to encourage more people to come to meetings. So I wanted to open this up to ask you to, you know, to see if you had any other comments about how things went this year, because we need to find ways to improve for 2023. Anyone? Well, I, I'll speak to yeah, it. Um, I thought that during the annual meeting, um, there, there was you know, certainly not a lot of participation, but the folks that were here had some good suggestions for next year to begin to get the word out maybe sooner. I mean, there's a whole list of laundry, you know, lots of things that are good <coughs> ideas to at least try. So, I mean, my thought is like next February, maybe revisit it mm -hmm. and just plan earlier, kind of have a set schedule on we're going to roll these things out, you know, like the banner, uh, get more information on the website. The other comment I heard was, um, Maybe trying to get the annual report out a little bit sooner. I don't know how that works. Well, remember, it has to be out 10 days. I know. Be, but it could be out sooner than that. And the confusion, of course, was that we originally, the day would have been Monday the 16th, right? Mm -hmm. And instead, it was a week prior for yeah. the annual report. So, so the annual report didn't come out all the time we would expect it to, just before we had our annual meeting. So, but yeah, so I mean, if we could get things together, um, we could get it could be right. gone to the printer sooner right so i just think there's you know there's a probably half a dozen things we can like next year just do them all and mm -hmm. see what happens mm -hmm. anyone else yeah i mean Thanks. i think that as with any of these things they're only going to be as important as we make them so um we tend to wait to the last minute and it's all on all of us and media and the interviews and all of that stuff coming out, you know, hours before rather than weeks before. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, all the time we have meetings and critical elections with little fanfare and then we wonder why there's low turnout yet. We think there's important things that need to be discussed, but if people don't know about it, they won't come out. So I think the banner is a good idea. I think we should utilize our local businesses for posters and uh speaking with them in advance so that they mention it to people coming in and you know whether it's downtown businesses or the supermarkets but um you know the risk is the low numbers uh are that few people can make some pretty big decisions <laughs> and uh, we may not be happy with that 
Yeah, pretty much uh, reiterate the colleagues there said the same thing. Jake, did you have any comments uh, about the? Yeah, I'll weigh in. Uh, I'm I'm skeptical. Uh, the uh, uh, I think uh, obviously during the meeting, for, first of all, I was surprised that we had the meeting a week before the uh, the uh, the vote. I thought uh, I would. I was expecting. I was surprised. I was expecting that we would have the meeting on the Monday night prior to the vote. Uh, and I think that was certainly uh, what we did this year was quite different than than what we've done in the past. So I would I would I would note that that development. Uh, and I don't even remember discussing it as at the board that we were going to do it that way. So that's one thing. The second thing is, you know, having having uh, uh, attended most meetings since I've moved back here in 2005. Um, the what happened the other night was quite typical. Uh, there was an issue uh, at the meeting, which was the uh, Australian ballot issue, and uh, the people that were against it packed the meeting. Uh, we had 24 people, I think, voters that were there, and uh, and the people that that wanted to keep the meeting uh, rallied enough support to uh, to get it uh, uh, defeated. And I think that's what we've seen year in and year out in most cases. A notable exception was the year when uh, I guess the frustration over the rising budget uh, led uh, led uh, people to uh, attend in a large number, and we actually uh, they actually voted to reduce the budget. So uh, that was the exception to the rule. Most of the time, we've seen things go through or be rejected. Uh, based on who packs the meeting, and uh, so I'm I'm skeptical, and I think that uh, 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 you know I think that of course at the, at this past meeting uh, that was held the week before we referred to last year's vote of like 75 people. Well, I think this year it looks like there was 150 or so people that voted, which is a a heck of a lot more than 24. And um, uh, I must admit, I think the idea of having a, a Saturday carnival with hot dogs and hamburgers and stuff like that is not, quite frankly, not in keeping with, with what we're trying to do. Uh, finally, um, as uh, all of you know on the board, um, you know, we had uh, six, five or six budget meetings I don't believe there was a single uh, resident uh, that uh, tuned in or uh, other than maybe the press uh, or to participate in any way in, uh, in our discussions. And I think uh, to me, it's almost in, uh, uh, uningenuous when, when people say, well, we wanna have a chance to talk about the budget when we make it very, easy for people to uh, come to our meetings uh, and uh, raise questions and issues and suggestions about the budget. So uh, I don't know. I just, uh, uh, I just, I, I certainly don't want to jump to a Saturday meeting. Uh, I certainly would, uh, would agree with my colleagues here in terms of getting information out sooner, having the meeting the night before the vote. Uh, which is the typical posture, and and see uh, uh, see if we can in, uh, increase attendance. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Jakes, and thank you all for your comments. Um, the uh, second item on here under number one was about the Saturday, so I'll ask about that. But first, I'd just like to say that I know that Ray Masuko had spent, had mentioned had said that at the meeting. However. He may have mentioned it to the town, but I don't recall him ever coming to a village trustee meeting and suggesting that we do an annual meeting and suggesting that we do these on a Saturday or at any other meeting of ours um, to encourage more voters. And I agree with Jiggs. I don't think that's necessarily going to make the difference, but I do think that if we push harder, pay more attention to getting the vote out, getting the news out earlier, do all the things such as the banner so that every time somebody goes underneath that thing, they're going to see it at least a few of those times and be reminded 
that they've got dates coming up to, to practice their ability to be a legislator. Yes, we have meetings twice a month, um, particularly during um, budget season. So people have every opportunity, even through Zoom, as we have now, to, um, to participate in that budget building before we get to final numbers and um, that get voted on the floor. And I think that, again, it is, as he says, disingenuous for people to say they've had no input. Um, however, then that might be reflected in the number of people who turned up to, um, to vote on the Tuesday the last week. Um, however, we could also put something in, and I keep saying it, something inflammatory goes on to an art, as it becomes an article in the warning, and people definitely show up. And we've had that. Um, some years ago, we had issues, and then, and I, I'm simply saying, you know, something, something that's controversial. If we, if that comes up for us, we could have done the, could have done the marijuana issue or things like that. Those kinds of things would allow more people to want to participate in our community. So, that's just the thought. So now, what do you think about doing a Saturday? Um, my understanding is that Westminster does a Saturday. I don't know. How long they've been doing that, but it would be interesting to see what their numbers show. Um, my understanding is they have pretty decent turnout mm -hmm. from those who have attended. So um, I think it's certainly right or wrong. I think it's worth considering and seeing how um, it's worked for their community. Stephanie, anything like that? Yeah, I'd like to be willing to take a look at that, hear what they have people have to say, what the conversation is. Well, two things. I think Mr. Masuko did mention at the annual meeting about this one that no, we just had. He did, yes, but he's never done it at a previous annual meeting. Oh, I got you. Okay, That's okay. what I meant to say. Is that okay. In previous years, he may have mentioned it to the he select did. board or the town side, but I don't ever hear, remember him hearing hearing him say it to us at our as meeting. a suggestion. Yeah, any of our meetings except for the last one. Okay. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. I mean, I think, well, we spoke about it. Briefly, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm not convinced that a Saturday would do the trick, but then again, like anything, you don't know unless you try it. But the problem is, you know, not that it's a problem, but it's a process mm -hmm. to get to that point to be able to try it, yeah. at least the way I understand it. Well, we have a charter, and the charter designates exactly when we have to have our annual meeting mm -hmm. and exactly when we have to have our voting day the following day. So it's It'd be nice if it were just like an easier way to try it. Yeah, again, I, I think it's a matter of, you know, putting importance on the meeting and making the effort and the yeah. lead up to it. I don't think that we need to be searching for things that are controversial. I think that well, to I'm me, just saying they could they could happen. They could come up and they could definitely if, increase. If they do, that's fine. But to be seeking them for oh, the no. sake of participation to me is uh, not where we need to have our focus. Our focus needs to be on the positive things that are part of those meetings and that's the budget and the articles that are already in place okay i tell you, I tell you the uh uh what my impression was the the few new people that were at the meeting whether it was on zoom or whether in person didn't have a clue really about what was in our budget i mean let's face it our budget is the Bellis Falls Police Department and a fire chief, a paid fire chief. Other than that, we participate uh, uh, in an agreed upon formula to uh, pay for the town manager and the uh, finance department. So the, you know, the idea of having a Saturday meeting to discuss the police budget, you know, just seems to me to be overkill uh now you know we didn't we didn't pick this structure but we've got we've got most of the money at the town meeting which they hold in in march beginning of march so they're not going to have that outside uh it's to me if if you were if you were serious about trying to increase attendance you'd have the town meeting uh on a saturday like uh, westminster does uh, but this is the village meeting, guys, and uh, and again, the scope of our budget is uh, is very limited. So uh, having budget meetings where uh, where the public can come in and and really go go at us uh, or go at the police department or something, 
uh, makes a lot of sense, but nobody seems to be interested in that. So that's that's the other thing that I think we have to keep uh, track of. So again, I think for those meetings, the budget meetings, I think a lot of people lose track of schedule and when things are happening and don't necessarily know which Tuesday or that that Tuesday happens to be the part of the budget that focuses on police. So it's, you know, on us, I believe, to, you know, get the word out before each of those meetings or, you know, some way to inform the public that that is the topic. Not everybody's going to go to every trustee meeting, but there are certain people in the community who are keen on what's happening in the police department or have, you know, specific feelings about the fire department and they might attend that versus another one and you know, just getting more more focus on what we're doing at each meeting may be helpful and i don't know the answer but if they don't know they won't come wait you had something you're saying when jake spoke up yeah i was just going to add that um you know my i guess if i had my priority would be to for next year to obviously leave it as it is, obviously, but really try to, you know, pull out all the stops, you know, well ahead of time. Right. To and all the suggestions that we've heard, you know, from us and those that came to the meet annual meeting, just and see what it does to, for next year's participation rates. Go from there. Well, I'm sure as we get closer to, like, we will have more concerns about that. We can do it. But if we were to change it to a Saturday, we also have to do a charter change as well, if we consider that. Um, I do want to say one of the things that I would point out, because we, this is how we would have be telling people anyway, and we didn't do it on the agenda, is we're supposed to do an organizational meeting, which mm -hmm. means we needed to set our time and dates, or, or days of week for meeting for the future, set things like who signs the warrants and so on and so forth. We'll need to do that at our very first June meeting, right. then, because we have to take care of that. But that's, this is, that's the part where we tell the audience, we're meeting the second and fourth Tuesday of every month right. um, after our summer vacation yeah. um, setting, meeting setting, which may happen today. And um, and what time do we do that? And that's reminders of those things are at every, every meeting should get out there. I mean, Fact TV runs this on their website, uploads it on the social media. Um, there are there are ways. I'm trying to go back to remember to put post our agendas on my Facebook page too, so people there will get this report out. Do what we can. We don't put them in the in the um in the newspapers but we do post them at the three required places that's another thing that we do with organizational make sure that they're in physical locations as well as on the website so people have opportunities to see other than simply on the website people complain that was a complaint at the meeting at the annual meeting about um about having stuff just online but we have to do all of those things and not everybody walks into town hall or goes into the police department or goes to the library or walks or looks at the kiosk if they or just inside the town hall door. Those are places that not everybody goes every day. Some people make a point of it. Those are the kind of people who show up at our meeting. <laughs> right. um, and just one point, controversial doesn't necessarily mean negative, just saying. Um, it could be something that's an opportunity that would that could be controversial to the community. Um, so I think we've covered all of it. We're, we'll, we'll just as we're together for another year, we'll make the efforts to cover all the points, trying to do more to get it out, get the word out there, get people involved, perhaps on budget um, budget meetings as well as the final one. Anything else you want to add, Scott? Before we no. move on? Think we're good. Okay. Great. Thank you for all your input, everyone. Number two, police update. Um, it says staffing in, um, in quotes and then in the parentheses, and then we have some items below. Just want to give an update since it's been a concern, obviously, in many of our uh, neighboring departments that there's been a real um, lack of, of uh, you know, officers that can fill out rosters. And um, unfortunately, or, or fortunately at least, we've at least had an opportunity to get some additional uh, people. We had a uh, oral board for six candidates last week three of which the board uh, were interested in, in moving through the process to the next steps, which would include backgrounds and final uh, sort of background and other checks, and then ultimately potentially bringing them in as part-time officers, which would be uh, a help at this point. 
to help us with our schedule through the summer and, and as we still look for full-time officers but at least it would give us some ability to schedule uh, through the summer and give us some coverages where you've seen unfortunately in some of our neighboring communities they've really struggled and had real uh real problems with not being able to fill out their roster so i guess it's a little bit of good news we're still looking for some full-time folks and we'll continue to do that but um at least if we can get these folks in and, and get them on schedule i think you'll see that it will help us dramatically um get through the bigger events through the summer and then you know hopefully by the fall we'll have another opportunity to be able to find some full-time folks and potentially get somebody in the academy so it's always a, a challenge but at least at this point our, our schedule looks like we won't be in a crisis um, at this point um, i had both chiefs here tonight just to talk a little bit about building projects there has been a lot of work going on so i have uh, sean's here as well as dave here so maybe sean you want to just give a brief update on some of the things we've been working on and then some of the things that we're talking about as we go forward <coughs> before we get into the next sort of budget cycle, but just give the board some ideas, some things that we're also looking at. Um, so I know, uh, for, you, for those of you that drive by the uh, Jason Fire Facility, the uh, parking lot on the south end of the building is is in. Uh, the door has been cut in, the door is in place. Um, waiting on a locksmith to come and put the uh, keypad system in uh, that, that we um, Want to put on that side of the building. Uh, the original person we had lined up came, looked at it, and decided it was beyond them. So they forwarded it to another company. I spoke with them on Friday, uh, sent them pictures. Hopefully, we can get that done relatively quickly. Um, so that'll take care of that project. Um, we have good news about the elevator. We finally had someone after many months of, of trying to uh, get a company to look at it. We had uh, Elf Elevator come in, take a look at it. Uh, got it <coughs> running, and uh, we had an inspector come in last um, sometime last week. Uh, did an inspection of it. Um, did it with half and walk away. He actually uh, wrote up a list of about nine things that were all relatively small uh, that he thought could be addressed. I received that um, on Monday, and I forwarded it to Alpha, and um, they're going to get back to us with a quote. Um, so it doesn't appear to be too disastrous as far as getting that, that back in, in working order. Um, we actually have a, uh, um, a love license, a contingent license. Uh, so um, we get that back in order and then start using that as a public space. In the um, so um, once we get an idea of exactly what that's going to cost, We'll finish off the front building. We did some rust remediation on there. There's still a little bit on the, the top structure we want to do. Um, we're just kind of waiting to see. Uh, we didn't think we were going to get any. Everyone that Scott and I have spoke to, uh, as soon as we told them we wanted to work with the existing elevator, they just kind of stopped talking to us. Um, so we, now we have to <coughs> do it. Hopefully, we can get this this finished up. Um, the next. Uh, projects um, around the building need to be dealt with are the the front pad, which I had actually put in as one of the art projects um, that um, had sunk in years ago. It's actually uh, shimmed out and is in pretty rough shape now. Um, so that's that's one project that's a pretty pricey project. Um, there are a few uh, spots on the uh, soffit around the outside of the building that uh, are rotted. I think we can handle that on next year's budget. Um, so the other big thing is um, we've just been talking to Sally Port on the back side of the back. They contacted the company in Claremont. Um, they're extremely busy, but um, I called them again today and see if they can get down there and uh, get them down here and look at it and give us some pricing out of time. Just a, a simple um, card for it that we go on the back side. And, uh, I do plan on, uh, we have excavated out um, what we found to be a new leak uh, in the basement. Um, we took that out um, and um, fixed that. Um, we're pretty confident with the, with the repairs we did there. Uh, we're going to put some gutters up on that end of the building. Uh, also want to um, look at putting uh, some snow breaks up on that side of the building as well. 
uh, to help with not only the, the snow in the winter, but the rain. Uh, Evan comes off that one side of the roof and really hammers that area. So it's at this point for the building itself, um, knock on wood, it, it seems to be that uh, the big projects are over with. Um, the, the only thing we need to think about is that we want to continue to use that facility. I don't know how long the elevator will last. Um, you know, it is pretty outdated. Uh, I think your, your next option, if you want to continue on with that building, is to go with something external to the building. Uh, a completely new, something like what they added on to the, to the uh, library. Right. But, um, but we do have, um, we have a driver's ed class. I was going to um, use the facility uh, in the summer. Uh, we charge you $25 an hour to use it. Um, so we've got that. And that, there's actually another one that's, he just needs a, they need a meeting space once a month. Um, so there's two driver's ed classes that are going to be there. Um, so there's interest in having meeting spaces that we can do. So by meeting space, you mean the upper floor? Yeah, the third floor. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. Okay. Um, gentlemen, questions? I think the only thing I'll add to that is longer term as we're talking about EMS and what our long term arrangements are with Golden Cross or other EMS organizations, you know, we'll have to look at our our equipment mix, possibilities of if we have to temporarily support an ambulance in the building or not, or other types of sort of what we're gonna do longer term of what, what we're doing on the floor inside the building itself. So all well, that's a little speculative at the moment. You guys read the papers and sort of get the same sense that I do that I think there's a lot of upheaval still to be had. And we'll sort of uh, you know, keep an eye on things, monitor things, and hope that everything settles out and we all have a good outcome when this is all done. Um, at the moment, I think we're, we're just keeping an eye on you know, our, our existing agreements and looking forward if we need to look at other arrangements as we go forward and we keep the board in that discussion. But, you know, those are longer term types of considerations. We just don't have the information right now to even start to speculate about anything with that. So I think it's just something we're keeping an eye on. Sean, you said the front pad needs replacement? Yes. Okay, so, and you said that's kind of costly. Do we have any budgeted money left over that was that we um, got some taxes you know, set aside for that work, or where are we, where are we just arguing? I think right we spend really? most of our building maintenance <coughs> funds. And well, we've, we've used all the, all the, right. the side parking lot, that's all used up. Uh, yeah. This this is, the front pad is something that needs to be addressed. It doesn't need to be addressed right away. Um, we thought that our funds would be good. Good use of that. How much money approximately? I'm, I'm going to guess based on the parking lot, probably right around 20,000. Maybe a little bit less. I'm just cool. keeping an eye on the That's about the that. dugout. It has to have a new base, you know, mm -hmm. better compaction so that it'll settle and then you know, some some new type of surface on the top so that it can wear a little more. And speaking with Andy uh, in the highway department, he'd like to tie that in with. Um, the road, the section where they fixed out the front. Um, that if you look, starting somewhere around the police dispatch window, uh, we've got that same, uh, where it's, it's not as bad, but it's starting to kind of heat there. Um, when they dug that out, there's a lot of clay there, so that whole section really needs to be taken out and, uh, and dug down and uh, a better kind of built. Anyone else? Jeff? Jake's way you got something? Just one question. Back on the um really by the PD uh, side. By the entrance door. Yeah. yeah. So where's that stand? Oh, it should be hopefully fixed. Hopefully it's fixed. We have not had any water come in there since then. Uh, since we completed it. Oh, okay. Um they sealed the outside, put in some drainage and then you know, slope the the rest of the way from the foundation. Oh, so far it's been dry. Okay, so I didn't realize all that at the time. Yeah. But you still want to do the gutters and the Yeah, the I, I think, I, I really think that the, that the leak help. was caused yeah, right. by all that, uh, water. That, one, that one storm when we had the torrential rain. Uh, and watching that, if, you, if you've got that entire roof that comes down yeah. and, and drains into that one area. Okay, 
Okay, we ready to move on to the vehicle replacement. Okay. There's no other questions, Jake's was good. Okay. Okay. So in your packet, I put in an update since the last time we spoke and, and looked at our current fleet and gave you updated runtime information in terms of the number of hours on the engines on the vehicles and also the mileage on the vehicles. Um, we do have, again, in our budget, we've put aside some monies to go ahead and start to look at the process so that we weren't coming back and asking for a $50,000 appropriation and we have to do a replacement in somewhat of a, a, more, a more regular type schedule. So at this point, the last one that we replaced, obviously, you can see um, had, had no mod this one right now that we're proposing rather to you um, is pretty close to what we had removed the last year, the, the uh, PD4, which was the 98,000 miles on it. This one has less miles but more runtime. So the issue is, like always, as these, as these vehicles age out, and they have so many hours of operation, they start to have breakdowns, concerns about operate, you know, whether or not they're reliable. And then at some point in time, they become uh, really not acceptable for the, you know, for the frontline operations of what, what we need the police vehicles to, to do. So this current request is for the 2016, which is um, PD3 on the metal. And we did go out and look for pricing. As everybody's aware, there's a tremendous amount of concern with supply chain and inventory. Um, the chief did find one opportunity fairly close by in Claremont. We had another price um, that came through in, uh, I think it was Massachusetts, was the other one that we received. And we had asked Faith, and they could not come up with anything. Um, they could give us any kind of access to the utility wise. Chief and I also looked through Auctions International and some other websites to see were there any viable used options that might be out there. Everything that I saw within a 200 mile radius, and I did not search any further than 200 miles, was all over five years of service, all over 60,000 miles of, of, uh, of uh, use and, and road miles, and also all out of warranty. So it didn't make any sense to try to recommend one of those to the board, given those three factors. So with that all in mind, um, we're asking if the board would be willing to go ahead and acquire the, the replacement vehicle in this current budget. Once we get it on, on site, we'll strip the existing vehicle for whatever we can reuse. It will have to have some updates to it, and then we will sell the other uh, used vehicle. And so ultimately, we will take monies from next year's budget to complete the outfit. So at this point, all we're asking for is the initial purchase price uh, in order to secure the vehicle and go from there. Do we have capital? Do we have the capital money set aside for buy for to purchase the vehicle this year? We did put money aside in the budget. Yeah. So we had the twenty. I think we ultimately settled on the twenty-five thousand. So all we have this year is twenty-five thousand. So we're going to use some of this year's existing to cover the balance of that. And then I said, like I said, next year we'll have some money for the outfitting once he strips it out and gets all of his. Right. So how much? So we're so twenty-five thousand was set for twenty twenty-three. Right. So what's in twenty twenty-two to pay for this vehicle? Well, we had 13000 roughly left over because we did spend some money on outfitting the previous year's vehicle. Okay. So we're going to need the 25000 from the from following the year. Right. right. As well as the balance in this year's in order to purchase. Okay. So that would just about cover it. Right? That covers it. Right. We'll, then, yeah, yeah, we'll, have, enough in the, we'll have enough to cover it. What's yeah. usually the outfitting? Is it five grand or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, it depends on what it can reuse. Each one, you know, most of the time you can get by with some of the stuff like the cages and some of the shotgun racks and some of the primary stuff. Lighting and the, and the, the lighting harnesses and those types of things are a little more difficult depending upon just how beat up they are, but we're still trying to see if we can reuse some of that as well. Um, and then ultimately, 
the full balance will be with the sale of the existing uh, right now used cruisers are probably in the upper of twelve thousand dollars right now on the used market. Um, we'll put a cover pretty close to the balance of what we need to finish up. The rest of the, the in-car computer has to be reset. Those types of things. Uh, Scott or uh, Deb, I got a, I have a, a couple of questions. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Scott, everybody, if if you'd look at page uh, six of fourteen of the budget package, uh, down near the bottom, we have the what is called the police vehicles, uh -huh. a, a twenty five thousand dollar item. This is what we did last year, right? That's our or sink right or fund it's already spent isn't it what did we spend it on we didn't we didn't we didn't buy a vehicle this year we bought it back in 21. so what's what is the what's the what's the twenty five thousand of actual Lisa said that that's the 25 for this year, plus we'll have 25 for next year, which you Right, but it's, according to this, budget. it's been spent. The budget was 25,000, actual is 25,000. We spent it all. The, we, way, the way it's written in here. I remember correctly, didn't we use that for this most recent, for the 2020? No, no that was last year's. That was last year, 2021. So, so could you ask her to find out what we spent that twenty five grand on? Because it says it's gone already. I don't think we've spent it, but uh, I know. But that's what I'm saying. It looks that's like the question. Yeah. And then if you look on the next page, page seven of fourteen. I'll tell you. If you look at the top of the page, and it says transfer to capital fund. Right. Uh, there was a zero budget. And a twenty thousand actual. So the, so here I'm looking at this as we've got twenty five thousand in the budget for vehicles, which is which was going to be our annual reserve number. Correct. And then we've got this other transfer of twenty thousand. So I mean, you could look at these numbers and say there's forty five thousand dollars available. But, the, the but that doesn't sound right to me. So I, I think we've got so to get the, transferred the 25 because the auditors had said that you needed to put it in reserve. You couldn't put it in a vehicle fund right. the way it was as an expense because it wouldn't roll over. So that's why it's showing as an expense. And then it was reallocated into the capital reserve. So you have the 25,000 available to you. That was just, a, that's just an, an entry for accounting purposes because the auditors would not allow you to roll it over. So it's moved out of that line. Moved out of an expense line into a capital reserve. Capital reserve. Right. So you also had That's added good. money. Right. You'd also added money in order to continue to to keep your um, your annual appropriation that you had requested. So at the moment, I think you're, you're right. We have forty five thousand roughly to spend. So we would, if that was the case, then we don't need to spend any money on the 2023. And I just don't know again until I, I, until yes. he's done stripping out the car. I think we wanted to yeah. start a, a, a an annual reserve for right, which you will have. And next year's budget, there is money put aside. Twenty five thousand. Another twenty five thousand will go into a capital reserve. But my point is that if we need thirty nine, it appears to me we've got forty five. You do have money. So yeah. it, it's like, you know, the, I think oh. then the question becomes uh, timing of the purchase and, and this, uh, we always seem to have this issue about new, new versus uh, re, uh, used or whatever. But uh, I think, I think we, most of us have preferred to go with the new, but uh, anyway, so it looks to me like we've got the funds and, uh, uh, you know, and we ought to probably do it. The only thing I can't give you is the total cost of the outfitting. Right, right. Again, until he's done cannibalizing and then and then selling the old equipment and then whatever balance is left, we put into the... Right. 
That means there's, there'll be four five thousand dollars left this from this year's budget, approximately right. yeah. from the forty five right. we have um, that we could use towards that. Correct. And then whatever the difference. balance, whatever it is, once we sell the other vehicle, whatever else we need to do to finish out. The day. So that'll make a small, a very small impact on twenty twenty three. It should. Right. Anything else, gentlemen? Step in. Uh, how's on this new vehicle that you located? How is it like immediately available, or they got a? It is immediately available. It was a leftover from another department that didn't take their full inventory, so we asked if they would hold it because it does have the full interceptor package on it. So and it's also in the, the white color schemes as well. And so black gold. <laughs> <laughs> That's new. I'll have to check that. <laughs> The company in Massachusetts said it could be up to 40 weeks uh, if we ordered from them. Yeah. So, wow. But this one's readily because something could get soon. Yes. You can get it this week. Is uh, it already equipped with anything? Or? Uh, no, but it is a police pack. Yeah. But it is not equipped. They say there are changes from 16 to 20 or 22. We probably will have to have a new uh, a new cage in it, right. um, but the camera system will fit yeah. in, the computer will, the radios will, right. we'll need a new console uh, yeah. to fit the radios in. Um, yeah. But the, the truly expensive things, the cameras, the radios, uh, can all go from one vehicle to the other. Good. So, are we good on this item? Or do we need to approve it because it's, do we need to make a motion to approve it, spend the money? I think we should. I think we did. Yeah, so, we, should. we can make sure we get this. All right, I'll go ahead and make the motion that the Board of Trustees approve the purchase of a new uh, police interceptor vehicle. A purchase price of $39,705. Second. And there was some question about whether we could vote. We need to, we do need to vote on it. It's, no, 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 but whether we're whether what? Whether we can yeah, because we haven't been sworn You haven't been sworn in? No. But that will get Oh at least we're we have more. Well right. I you know what? I haven't been resworn in either. Yeah, so I <sighs> Deborah, I'm surprised at you. I'm surprised. I know. I could have been right in the town hall. I told these faces it. Oh, my God. What am I? What's the matter with me? Um, Stefan and I are the only legal voters here. That's not, not a quorum. And you can't, yeah. Well, we already, you know. Oh, Jesus. Um, well, let's see. That would mean this would be in a, this would be something that has to be, we could ratify at the next meeting. We could, yeah. be, we could go forward, ratify at the next meeting. I, I hate doing those. I hate life. them. I mean, it's like the worst ever, but but um, but you can we can we can do them. And nobody, we need yeah, something to be sworn in. We need a JP or we need a clerk. I can notarize or, that as a notary and a JP. Yeah, well, Kathleen's there. Yeah, can she not swear that. us in, Kathleen? She's on Zoom. Please unmute Kathleen. She's supposed to be faster. I mean, I'll make it. She's the one that's doing the document. Document. Yes. Yeah. And you, we did not get sworn in. We totally spaced getting resworn in. But that's okay because I forgot to print them. <laughs> so, can, is it possible for you to do a verbal this evening so we can make a motion? Um, I can make one up. Would you please? Um, let's. We'll go on to the next item and we'll come back to you. How about that? Um, Would that work? Or no, you're trying to keep minutes too. Yeah. Um, oh, that's so okay. You go on. I'm going to look up, look one up on. Go ahead. That'd be great. Okay, okay so we're going to move on to parking enforcement update. Come back to this item. Great. So wow. give you copies of some of the um, exactly. warnings that have been appearing on windshields and trying to get people back into the habit of trying to pay attention to the time limits on parking. And so we have sort of gone through that period of time and now we're at a point in time where we've started to actually do active enforcement so okay. hopefully people have gotten the message and, and changed their habits i did notice more people parking in some of the remote lots and coming into the village 
to post parking in front of their businesses or what have you mm -hmm. uh, working for the day. So like most pandemic behaviors, we've had to sort of change some of our behaviors that we learned over the pandemic. And I think now we're at a point where we're not going to be nice and one, we're going to be enforcing. So this is more of just a general heads up. And who's doing, who's, who's putting who's these out, placing the department or? Police department yes. put these out and you could, the first day that we did it, uh, put the warnings out, the next day you could see a marked in, uh, difference in the, in the parking in the, <coughs> in the square. Um, so I guess it's just yeah. a general warning to folks that, you know, we certainly want you to come here and shop and do your business, but also you need to be yeah. back and paying I'm, attention to I'm shocked that certain certain bookstore owner ha isn't down here complaining about these. Um, <laughs> I quite frankly, they haven't got yeah. tickets yet. When they get tickets, then she'll have but a problem. Maybe we'll get some complaints at that point. Right yeah. now, people have just sort of gotten a notice, so that's, you know, maybe easily forgotten. Yeah. But... Yeah, we're, we're past that point now, and we're now at a point of enforcement, so. I'd like to bring up one thing about the wording of the notice, and that is that the, um, the municipal lots, it says there is all day free parking available at Island Park, Waypoint Center, Hetty Green, and um, Old Bridge Street. My concern about that is that I, and you know I've noted to you, there are people who park in there 24 hours a day, 24-7. Um, my only concern is they're doing that sort of thing. And maybe this wording doesn't make any difference to them anyway. People are going to do that kind of thing, will do it anyway. Right. But parking permits, overnight parking permits, don't permit them to stay there 24 hours a day, correct? That's correct. Right. But they don't look at that. And then they leave their vehicles there all night, all day, all night, all day. They don't move from a spot. They Sometimes they move to another spot in the same lot, or they move to another lot, and they stay there. Um, that's a different issue that I think we need to address. Mm -hmm. Doesn't happen with a lot of people, but again, this summer is going to be very congested for parking when and when all this work is really geared up, and the hotel and the apartment buildings are, are worked on, and the People Street Bridge gets started, and the off the line bridge gets started. We're going to lose a lot, a significant amount of parking in the village. It's not going to be that's going to, not going to be pretty. Um, so that's something that I hope has to be by the time you see the depot actually under construction and a few of these other things that we might have some other options available to us for some more short term mm -hmm. parking to alleviate some of that crunch. But I agree with you, it's going to create some, some difficulty. This is really more to, to try to reinforce in the you know, in the square and people that are parking and coming to the to the main businesses to get back into a, a you know, practice of Practice of moving the vehicles. Sure. And that kind of yeah. Yep. And I do appreciate that. It's it's helpful. I'm by the way moving out of the square. Mm. Um, the end of the month we're supposed to be moving into back to my house. Um, be, you know because we, we just were there because we don't have a garage and we still don't have a garage. Um, mm -hmm. But we're going to find alternative methods to <coughs> our equipment, which is really the main part of our problem, as we have a constant house in the house. But we will be able to, that'll eliminate our vehicles being there any amount of time um, after the 31st. So um, it's especially Canal Street and that tight end. Right. Um, it's a difficult place and people get people make up the parking spot. You get to the end of the parking spot, they make another one just before going down Canal Street. And as if there's a line there, but whatever. Whatever we can do to keep people moving along. If, and I don't, I know you have limited people to get officers to get tickets out there too. So we'll do what we can. I, I can't guarantee that we'll be there every two hours every day, but we will. Yeah. We'll yeah. do what we can, and hopefully, yeah. uh, a little enforcement will go a long way. To Helps the start of the time too. Yeah, so. yeah. So they don't. It's not routinely the same with them. They're not to park there. Anything else from board members? Be okay with this? It looks like it's a plan, and it's it's making if it's working, it's good. <coughs> um, Kathleen, how are you doing? Oh, she's not back yet. Okay, um, let's move on. You want to move on? Oh, here she is. I'm still. Did you find no, okay. I can't find one. I'm trying to look online and. Okay. All right, um, can we move on to the governor's traffic safety enforcement? And that'd be 
<coughs> give her this is more minutes. of just a general update for the public as well as for the board that this year they are uh, again multiple jurisdictions participate they've asked us to participate they choose locations in around the, the general area and they run traffic details for specific enforcement activities They'll, you'll see activity really ramping up now from this point of the year up through the first week or 10 days of June. So we'll be participating. Again, those are all uh, covered through uh, grants and third party payments, but you might see us in some of the closer, the more neighboring uh, um, details uh, with some of our officers. So a good program for us to participate and, and they ask, you know, I think there's multiple jurisdictions here in this year's program that will be working uh, on this this joint uh, task force. I have they one have, when you're ready. Okay, great. thanks. But at this point, it's probably you know not great to give out locations. Probably. Oh no, no, no. no. <laughs> that's, that's sort of the piece of purpose. But the idea is, yeah. please, you know, don't do the things you should be doing, and you'll be perfectly fine with the task force activities. The so. click it or ticket thing they were doing in Brattleboro today was that part? Is that part that's, of the governor's? That's part of the governor's. Yeah, yeah. So the last year, just as a as an aside, all of it was paid for with the with the grant, um, but we also received twenty nine hundred dollars worth of uh, equipment, uh, two cool. new radars from Highway Safety. Uh, for the department so what's the plan this year we don't have exactly what we're going to get or what they have or how much they have for our grant but uh, that will come up later okay. well great um so okay. kathleen's ready <laughs> okay so, so kathleen, do you have the, yeah what do you the what one you i have is for the trustees i'm not sure if it will include you but if I give you this tonight, then the three of you can come and sign one with me? Yes, certainly. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So you want us to hold up our right hand and get up to you? Um, sure, and I'm going to have to add lib here, so. Okay. We're, um, Wade and Jeff are there. I mean, I know yes. they're there. I can only see you, Deb, so. Yes. Wade's to my left and Jeff's to my right. Okay. So as a board member, do you agree to fulfill your roles and responsibilities as delineated in board policies, adhere to board of trustees norms during board meetings, support the executive director and his or her executive role, respect and support the bylaws, policies, operations, and board decisions, and conduct yourself in a spirit of collegiality and respect the collective decisions of the board and subordinate and subordinate personal issues to the best interest of leaning forward honor confidentiality confidentiality regarding decisions comments and deliberations and exercise the above responsibilities at all times and with due diligence, care, and skill in a reasonable and prudent manner. Do. I do. I do. Okay. okay. Not to throw a monkey wrench in this, but what happened to the, the Constitution and the state of Vermont and all this other good stuff? I don't know, but I just read that off the Secretary of State's website, so. Well, it sounds dramatically different. It does, right. That's so okay. We'll then you can sign the one that I will print off for you tomorrow if you would there like. You I'll be in there. Right. Well, thank and you very much. We'll do that. And that one is much shorter and sweeter than what I just read. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for doing All the right. extra work for us tonight. We appreciate that. So we can take no, care of business. No, no problem. Thank you. Okay, so now back up to the vehicle replacement option. And would you please make that motion again, Stephanie? Sure, I'll make the motion that the Board of Trustees authorize the purchase of a police vehicle in the amount of $39,705 for the Phyllis Falls Police Department. Any a second? Second. Is there any further discussion on the, um, on the motion just made? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 
Oh, we have to do a roll call. So start with you, Jiggs. Uh, uh, Jiggs McAuliffe, aye. Jeff Dunbar, aye. Stefan Golick, aye. Deborah Wright, aye. Wade Mishar, aye. Okay, there we have it, and, and there you are. Um, thank you. Scott. And this will not, this means having done the swearing in, thank you, audience, for being patient. Um, this will not require us to do a um, ratification at a future meeting. We've taken care of it. And we'll go in this week, all three of us, and not necessarily at the same time, <laughs> and sign um, our swearing in. First thing tomorrow morning, right? Sure. Oh, yeah, I have to be out of the house at 8. So I'll I'm, there. I'm there at 7 a.m. Um, yes, ma'am. You got donuts? Just kidding. Maybe no. frosted, maybe. <laughs> I no, no, you need that. Just kidding. Thank you, Dave. Now you've got to bring that. Oh, wait, one second. Wait, do you have something? I have one thing that if the chief was going to leave, I just wanted to. Oh, yeah. To sure, go ahead before we move on. Just, um, I just wanted to let you and the manager know that during the day of the vote, I did hear from just holding my pass along from a, two or three, not a lot, but from two or three concerned people about maybe enhancing our when you can or as needed uh, basically patrol not patrolling but uh, enforcement speed enforcement speed you know, yeah. um that makes sense yeah it does i mean right? the, the reader up by my house is still not functioning um so that just doesn't help and we're, and we're hearing based upon your ability to patrol traffic, um, traffic a lot of traffic enforcement. Right. yeah I, I just heard it from two or three people at the the, the day of the vote yeah that's true you know, yeah. just in general passing said that, you know, you might have to step it up or do more and, you know, do both. Yeah. If you don't know, you can't deal with it. So that's true. I'm just that's passing true. that along. You know how it's, how spring brings out the people with the lab motors and high speeds. And, yeah. Speed. Yeah. And like Scooping the a little. Salute. Yep. Bruce exactly. Yep. Uh, thank, thank you, you David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wade. Yes, for remembering to bring that up. Um, number three on our agenda is adopt the 2023 summer meeting schedule. So I put in your packet a proposed list of dates, one of them being this evening, obviously, but then mm -hmm. also for next week, we have a our board meeting and then through the summer, uh, our regular one meeting a month, followed by then resuming our regular schedule back in September. Okay, so what do you guys think of this? Instead, usually it's June, July, and August, but this is adding one more month in September. We tried to avoid the holidays as much as possible just mm -hmm. so that you didn't have the meeting right after you came back from Labor Day or right. Fourth of July or you know, we tried to condense stuff so people can take advantage if they need to for yeah, I mean, if we had to call a special meeting or emergency meeting we can do that. Absolutely. So, if this there's is anything fine, pressing yeah. we can certainly add it if it's your pleasure. Sure. Right. This just gives us again something we can post and then as we do the organization meeting we'll add it to that as well. Okay, any further comments? Um, so June, if I'm reading this okay. right, so there, in September there would be just the one meeting. Right. And then and then we go back to two meetings in October. Okay, I got it. Right. No, I just want to... Yes. Okay. Is everyone else okay with that? Any other comments? Jake? I'll make the motion. Okay, please do. Or did he? <laughs> Do we need a mo even need a motion? I don't think we need a motion to accept these date changes. Do we? we don't necessarily have to have a motion to adopt. It's not really any. It's just more for your. It just yeah, yeah. We'll make sure that we publish it, and then I'll have it right. at organizational meeting. So it's a, and it's we step to June fourteenth has to be our organizational meeting. Right. Has to be we have to take care of the official business. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Next item is High Hill drainage updates. So you know, flood control is one of those things, right, where time gets passes us by, but I just want to bring the board an update as to what's been happening since we last spoke about last July's rain. Been had a host of meetings with FEMA representatives, state Vermont emergency management reps, and looked at various alternatives that would potentially might be available to us for long-term solutions and mitigation. So the long and short of it, I incorporated some of the emails just so the board could see some of the back and forth and some of the various programs that are out there. The, 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 based on that particular location, the High Hill Ravine and some of the some of the outdated engineering that's that's part of that, 
uh, analysis, they recommend that we go through this building resilient infrastructure and communities program, which of course have to have an acronym because it's a federal program, sure. so they call it BRIC, and that there'll be a round of funding that will be coming probably in August, and then there'll be some sort of a application and then a, a deadline for later on at the end of this year. So I think the, the next logical thing for us to do is to go through that process and you know qualify, get, get some money so that we can update the analysis, come up with all of the requirements so that if we do get into the federal programming, we can make sure that it meets all the federal guidelines and requirements before we try and do anything um going forward that would require more local money in order to do our you know mitigation fixes so basically this is just an informational item for the board to, and the community just to let them know that we're still looking at alternatives we're still hoping to partner with the federal government so that they can shoulder some of that burden of whatever engineering improvements might be necessary um, and then ultimately we'll be keeping this in the public conversation as you know, we proceed through the application and hopefully award process. Okay. I only, my only question is, if you've done this stuff off to Chuck because it be, it's stuff we might find some way to insert more stringently or strongly in our town plan uh, for the floodplain and um, stormwater stuff that we're adding. That's yeah, we do have in the local hazard mitigation plan, so yeah. that's part of it. That's okay. part of you know that process. So Good. yes, so he, they're specifically in there. Yes, but they are important to keep that. It's just the programming of these funds and the timing of it. It just goes on, and I know people get frustrated with right, just how long it takes. So oh. I don't want them to think we have abandoned the process. It's just we're trying yeah, to do the, everything we can to get the federal monies that you know offset our local. Taxpayer. And another year goes by before we actually have the funds and that sort of thing. Right. These are long term solutions, but again, we just want the public to know we're aware, you know, we're, we're working through the process and we're hopeful that we can find some solutions so that we don't have these problems when we have these two inch examples. I uh, did. I had a question. Uh, the. Uh, uh, Scott, you had mentioned uh, a few meetings ago something about the uh, flood mitigation at the uh, sewer treatment plant as being a, a possible candidate for ARPA or not, uh, or yeah, ARPA funds or or the uh, or the uh, you know reconstruction bill that was passed. Uh, is is there anything? And we're still waiting for them, Jigs, to act on the first round of ARPA requests. We did have funding requests in that first round of state money. Okay. So we had hoped that originally they thought that they would know something by May. Now they're telling us by June or July. Oh. So we'll keep an eye on that. As soon as we know something, we'll, we'll certainly let the board know. Okay, so now it's June or July. Yes. The intended use plan that we had hoped to know by now, they still have not come out with that publicly. So. Okay. Thanks, Jim, for adding that. It's definitely something we need to keep on top of. All right, financials are the last item on the agenda. Yep. And um, we usually start with Jake because he usually has questions. The one thing that um, I did talk to Jigs earlier, he yep. questioned the allocation of some of the additional monies that we had spent with Memric and whether or not those had been allocated um, to some of the um, utility funds specifically. So I did talk to Alyssa briefly this afternoon. There was allocations in both the water and sewer. And I think Alyssa is still on, on her phone there. That there's the specific there accounts. Is. There she is. So we had talked about both of those, I think, were put in under, I believe it was out. Uh, I'm looking for it as I talk to Alyssa, so I'm stumbling around. Is it under other professionals, other professional services? On page one, page two? Yes, that's where they are. Okay, all right, great. Thank you, Alyssa. I'm good, that makes, that makes sense of the 1,725%. Yeah, <laughs> that's why that number might look a little out of yeah. Um, I did, 
Oh, just above there where it says finance staff, it looks like we're going to run over budget on that line item before the end of the year. So the rest of May salaries and June salaries go in there. So we might run a little bit over. But there have been changes. So. Anything else, Jigs? Yeah, the, uh, on page uh, six of 14. Uh, under the retention recruitment bonus uh, line uh, is the overage there a result of increased staffing? It's $4,500. I think so. I think that's when we um, paid a couple of the part-time who became full time? Okay. So it was. Me, so I can't say for sure. But okay. We, we had, yeah, and we had officer movement. Um, did that impact that line, Scott? It Attention does a little bit, right? Because whenever we lose somebody like that, there's a. Like yeah, but the yeah the officer change. And then internally, we've had some changes too. Yeah, that's why. We're still looking positive for our, our overall mm -hmm. expenses for the police budget due to the fact that, again, we're still looking at full-time vacancies, so we don't have everything filled. But some of the individual items will look a little out of sequence because of that. That's all I had on the general account. Okay. On the um, wait, um, wait a second. Just okay. let me cover that page. Um, you might as well as you're going through um, the police equipment piece, um, equipment purchase and repair, and contracting car cameras. That's all offset, right? We have it offset in another account. A big chunk of that was offset okay. with uh, the insurance recovery. Okay. All right, James. Go ahead. On the uh, water fund. Uh, on the revenues, the Northwest Minister is, is still showing zero. And uh, I certainly, I'm, my understanding is we provide okay, water okay. service out there, and uh, I would expect to see some, at least an accrual of revenue, if not the actual receipt. Has been some, I thought. There has been payment, Jig. So right, it's been posted as right. It has to be posted against that specific line item. Oh, and it, they haven't paid in full, but they've paid a, a a chunk of that. So we have to do some some updates to that. Okay. The uh, the other the other question on revenue is the um, if you look at the top line. We budgeted 960 and we're showing 908. Except, yeah. And the uh, does that mean we've have we accrued the full 12 months of of uh, water revenue? This is the main right. one that we all pay. Right. I'm just surprised that we're that much under the budget. And it might be worse than that if indeed the North Westminster payment is in the general. That's a separate line. North Westminster yeah. is a separate line. Separate line, but right now there's no money allocated to it. So where is it? Is it in that number? I don't know that. I, mean, I guess I'd ask the finance director that question. Is it in the current water charges? The payments from North Westminster? I, don't know where I haven't. I haven't been informed that we've received any money from them yet so i guess i'm going to have to look at that tomorrow yeah, unless i heard that i thought they had paid a half of the portion yeah so, so i thought too right i remember that. Correct. but we don't know where it is because it's right. not on our paperwork so yes thank you if you can look that up and figure out where it is I will. um but yeah well i think we have a may, a may payments due tomorrow well that that will be on this too right. so right. yes so you yeah, still got, you still got revenue to accrue on that yeah, on the top line. Yes. Okay. Yep. Good. 
I don't, think should... I don't think they'll fall short, Jiggs. I think they'll meet or exceed that that budget. Great. Okay, that was my impression that we would, but okay. The uh, the okay, but then uh, just a minor thing on page ten. Uh, the vehicle replacement, which is halfway down. <clears throat> We haven't expensed that, but I'm assuming we'll expense that to the to a reserve. Is that the seven thousand? The seven, yes. Yes. Yep. I'm going to do some entries. I actually wanted to, um, not that I have to, but I, it would be nice if I had um, trustee approval to, in fact, move that money, just because of the way that it's been budgeted. It's not really apparent that you intend to save it. So if um, like a motion, either, it would be either, helpful. You don't it have to do it now, but good. at the next meeting, although it's not on the, we'd have to ratify. So how about we yeah, put it on the next meeting. June 14th at the next yeah. meeting? Yeah. Okay. 14th. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll definitely do that. I have a question on that same very uh, page. Page. Yep. Seems you right there. What's the deal with the? Uh, it says grizzle dry roof and culverts both have five grand each, but nothing expended. Yeah. Those just are got both. an invoice for that. Yeah, I think I saw somebody on the grizzle dry roof on. Oh, right really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just recently. Yeah. Just today we got an invoice for the grizzle dry roof. Okay. Ask and you shall receive. Hopefully, yeah. it didn't exceed five thousand dollars. But they have to put one on it. They're working on it. Yeah. Oh, all right. I was just curious. Thanks. Right? Yep. Yeah. Is that it, Jigs? That's it. The uh, on the uh, oh the on the wastewater uh, the question of of I, I think. Uh, we still don't show having drawn down that loan for the dryer. And uh, if I don't know if you need another motion, but I would, I would urge that we, that we do that, that we, that we borrow the funds to offset the purchase price of that. We received the permission from the uh, uh, village vote, and I think we should do that. Yeah, we didn't we didn't complete the five year note, but we certainly can, and it probably makes sense to do it okay. since that fund is a little bit cash poor at the moment. So again, that would need we'll a put motion. That well, it's been approved by the it, voters. You approved true. it in the budget. It's yeah. just executing, you know, sort of a sense of the board that yeah, we're going to go ahead and execute that option. It makes sense. So, I guess I still have a question about the whole process of going through the voters to get the money to approve the money to, you know, to get a bond mm -hmm. or um or loan for this is that we asked the voters of the village of Bells Falls every one of them I'm assuming is a user of water and sewer however not all people who are using users of water and sewer are voters in this in the village of Bells Falls or are residents of Bells Falls so how are we making sure that so usually when we get grants or loans and stuff like that, we spread it across all users, but that's not happening if we're, if that's not going to happen if we're spending, unless we raise our rates, which I really don't want to do. Well, don't forget, Rob also does allocations for every capital, the portions that are, that are part of the Walpole uh -huh. and other outside entities all get a portion of that capital. So they do get, they do get a portion of that. Absolutely. Okay. And Not well just in, in users' case. fees. That's it's something in addition. No, to he that. does it in addition. That's okay. part of his that's, quarterly billing. That's the clarity I want. Okay. That that we do every year. So and, you and Deb, it's I'm a it's a, a uh, it's a legal obligation of the village of Bell's Falls. Right. But the but the payment the debt service comes strictly from the uh, sewer fund. Yes, exactly. However, and about twenty-five percent of all of that gets paid by users outside of your taxpayers. Okay, right. and that's what I'm looking that's for. That's about so. on average about how that works out over time. Okay, and yeah. so and that'll continue with the driver as well. Of course, and to, technically, I prefer to use ARPA funds or receive grant money from 
clean water source or whatever it is in order to take care of it instead of having to impact us and have to raise rates. And if that's the case, we can always, you know, take the notes off early. There's no pre there's no pre payment right. penalty, and then you can move on. And, and just the, gives you flexibility to do that. And the clean water money and all that stuff that wrapped all up in the wastewater is the June plan. July thing now. Still waiting. Yeah, so still waiting. Okay. That's for the state money. That's not for our ARPA money. That's for the yeah, state. Yeah, no, no, plan. states. Yeah, states. Right. And we're waiting to see about what that is before we do anything else with it our. It would ARPA make money. sense to see right before we jump into our money. If you used ARPA money for that, would it remove the obligation of the twenty five percent payer? No. No, because we still charge them for the capital improvements that they have a direct benefit yeah. to. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's so still that would have a subsidy to it. That would be I mean, beneficial it's a good to news the issue for our rate payers because yeah. there's yeah. you know outside entities that do support right the operation. So it's a it's a good relationship. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Considering all the sectors and stuff, you'd think that we could as a revenue stream that we would be in a better position. But things were what they were. Well, I'm very happy that you approved the dryer because with the current surcharges for fuel and hauling, yeah. our sludge prices would have doubled. Yeah. 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 So I think the board was very wise in its decision, and right now you're looking very positive. Yeah. Yeah. On that side of the ledger. And of course, we still need to find a better distribution means. Storage and distribution. Still working on the storage, and ultimately, I think that'll be the next major investment. Yeah, it'll have to be just to make it let take less time for the plant. And the storing all that makes handling. it more efficient. Yep. And helps the farmers too. Easier access. Yes. Did you have any other questions, Jake? I did not. That, that's good. Um, Jeff and Stephen, you had anything to say? Okay. Wait, do you have anything else? Just one. <coughs> Back on the uh, very page? first page of the Village General Fund. So page, okay. page two, one of, one page one. one. That's the revenues. Page one of 14. Yep. yep. It says miscellaneous fire department revenue, 44,501. What's that far? You still receive the money on the call boxes? Nope. I don't know. What is it? Someone so that. It. Is a couple of different times. Um, Sean was cleaning out and he sold for scrap or, you know, otherwise some that had been accumulating. Junk. Basically, junk. Yeah, sold, junk. sold junk and made money. Okay. Yes. It, right. Clean house and yeah. gave it, or sold it off to people who collected or whatever. Yeah, that sort of thing. People, yes. And people do when okay. it comes to a fire department, a police department. Yeah. I was just curious because uh, it was pretty high. Yep. Yeah, we checked the final and we got 45. Did Stefan buy any of that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> was it, did we overcharge him? Yeah, did you overcharge him, James? <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> but now that we're looking at it, let me ask if oh, I'm yeah, yeah, Okay. Okay. We got to see on page one, it says insurance claim, and then we have $21,010.43. It's a lightning strike. Uh, okay. Okay. Yep. Storm. Right. The one last summer. Yes. Right. Today. Before mm -hmm. the flood. Yeah. Right. 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 Also, also in that is the, um, there was a fire truck was damaged. I think the lightning we payment. Might be we got a payment. Uh, we got a payment from the insurance company for like eight fifty three or something like that, and then we got our thousand dollar deductible back. So that's all in there too. So when there's damage to a truck that was purchased by the town, and we only pay a dollar a year, who gets the? <laughs> Technically, should be getting the revenue out of curiosity. You know, like when they sold the duck boat, you know, all those kinds of things that go on that they that departments keep personally and technically since the purchase, that's the equipment that you know that's that whole big ball of wax that you're working on. It gets a little bit <laughs> touchy because sometimes. That's why are, I said it. <laughs> well, there are department funds in there outside of town funds, and there are other sources that that are in there. So I think that's still being handled or worked yeah. through with the equipment. Committee. I mean, the insurance is still handled by the village. So money for damage to a fire truck mm -hmm. that we are insured, insurance claims. Right. You're still so they're that. You're, still but, operating you know, that you're right. It's equipment. a touchy subject. Yes, it can be. Yep. Okay. 
I think we've covered all our items, and we're down to reviewing agenda items for the next meeting, June 14th. Yep. Um, which we also, which we realize we're going to have organizational information on it. Yes. Um, anything else you think might be on there at this point? Mm, I'm not sure. We might get the BF Trades people, maybe. Maybe. They're having a job fair, I guess, in cooperation with BDCC next month. Mm. You wanted to get the uh, motion to reserve the seven yep. thousand for vehicle. Yeah, yes, yeah. the motion to reserve yes. the seven thousand. Yep, that's it. Thank that's you, Jeff. Motion that's for both. That's for both the water and the sewer, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think we want to ask for the seven thousand from last year as well. That's in the um, fund balance because it was never moved last year. Oh, okay. So you take the twenty-one plus the. 20 so we're going to do fourteen from water and fourteen from sewer. Okay. <laughs> For both fiscal years. Yeah. Yep. Okay. At this point, that's what we got. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. You still on a agenda? You're still on. Yeah. For the next 14. meeting. Yep. <clears throat> So I was going to bring this up on the other business, but maybe it'd be better for the next meeting to review the um, only be, again because of the day of the voting. I had two or three people ask about lawns. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. That's what you're handled by the police department. We have a ordinance, mm -hmm. village ordinance. It's a village ordinance because I couldn't find it in my book it's, tonight. Yeah, yeah. it's grass cutting. Um, it's um. Offenses against persons and property. I think that's the one it's in. Oh, okay, I'll have to read it. Just look because the number that's not, that's actually a catch-all ordinance with a lot of stuff dumped into it. Okay. I think it's in there. Like maintenance kind of yeah, it's um, it, and it's supposed to be the, the police department that writes uh, letters to the own property owners. And I I know my grass is like this high. I'm mean, getting on my son, but but yeah, it was but 90 some degrees. Sadly, you didn't do it. So yeah, so we don't want yes, and there is a there are several of those. Yeah. So that's what I, was I was going to bring that up too, Wade. Uh, this guy on 7 School Street across the street, this is the second year he hasn't mowed the lawn. And, uh, I know it has. Yep. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely well, it's ridiculous. So the, we, we, need to, we need to have yeah. those go out. Uh, yep. the, so they'll just get it done. So we won't, they won't have to incur a cost from the police department hiring somebody to go mow the lawn. I think the other thing we had talked about in previous meetings is to go back and review our rental housing yep. ordinance because the state is still right in they're, they're sort of moving in our direction but they're not moving very quickly in our direction and i think it's probably at a point where you would want to maybe take action on your or you know on our particular ordinance and then push them to give us a yeah. cool yeah. agreement so yeah. Yeah. Yes, Kathy. The when Ron was here, what he used to do is he'd go around and get the list of buildings. If he didn't know the owner, he would come to us and get because some of them are are rentals. So he would just right. come in, get the name of the owner from us, and send the owner the letter. Right, so we can help you. with that. We can help with that if Dave needs help with it. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, it would be great. I wanted. Oh, I wanted to ask you how is how your um how the hydrant plant is that one's left slowly. Uh, there was I know at least a couple done here a couple Saturdays ago. Right, right. And, uh, thanks to the manager and his helper too. And um, we got more to do. We yeah, yeah, but it's yes. it's in the works. Uh, the McAuliffe's are going to, I'm working on getting their info and I've had a person on Bird Street offer to do two or three up there. So that's the next ones. Okay. Good. So we're pecking away at them. Yep. I can do Birch. One up there. Halfway up, I think, on the left. Yeah, so that was you know, just a, yeah, a side question on that. Mm -hmm. um, so then we, we move on to reviewing agenda items for the joint board meeting. What do we got on there? So we'll have the area-wide plan, the final report on that. We'll have the update on the fire equipment committee, some of the things we've been working on. It goes back to the MOU, um, some updates to that. We'll also have the uh, final report from the ARPA folks. 
And there was one other thing that okay. happened. Right? Boing. That's yeah. my train of thought. So if there's anything else the board would like, please let me know. <coughs> what about the oh. tax sale? Is there? Oh, yeah. Sale. Tax Thank sale. You. That was the other yeah. thing. Yeah. It was. I knew it was on. Yeah, the tax sale. That's it. Yep. Yeah, somebody came in and to me yesterday and said, asked about um, wanting to know what, what was on the tax sale list. And I said, well, it's being finalized. Right. And I said, and remember, you, if you purchase something, you have to wait a day, a year, a day to occupy it. Oh, you do? I said, yeah. That's how, that's how it works. They have an opportunity to redeem. So, um, but there's an interest. Both times it's people looking to, for the interest. Yeah, but sometimes if somebody really wants a property, they have to realize they can't move in. Well, yeah. Well, they, they, yeah. they need to do a little bit more research. And this was then. that case, not for not for interest yeah. purposes. So. Um, one one hour <coughs> yes. for our for our next meeting. Yeah. Oh, June fourteenth. Yeah. Can we go back to that? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. The meeting before the village meeting, we were gonna make sure that we had those of us that hadn't read this village fellows falls fire alarm safety order. Yes. Mm -hmm. We were going to make sure that we read it so that we could. That's uh, right, we didn't. So we haven't done that. Okay. that. So, so that should go on the June 14th meeting, too. Thank yeah. you. You're right. We haven't taken yeah, We didn't do it at, well, we at didn't the last meeting. We the last regular meeting. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Right. Oh, so the thing about the rental housing ordinance um, is Sean still doesn't have his letter, right? The MOU. And the way I think this is going to go is I think we'll have to do our ordinance anyway. And then I think the state is, you know, they did put some language in the state budget where they're going to be transferring the responsibility to the Division of Public Safety. Mm -hmm. And they were giving them more inspectors. So I right. think now right. they'll think be more inclined to do these agreements. Okay. So, so with it, we move forward and it'll be in place. And yes. at some point, John will get. Because we would like to get started and. and Try to get something going so that we have a yeah a more organized. We're definitely looking at twenty twenty three before. It, well, yeah, waiting until back. they're done and then they come back to us is probably another year plus. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense. We might as well try to push forward. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. It's, it's supposed to be tri board meeting. So yes. Joint, but okay. So uh, all these all these items will be on there and yes. affect the entire community. So all three boards will be there. Yes. Um, I, I know one of the things that irritates some trustees slash board slash select board members is having items that belong just to one group, but not to the other three. And then they have to sit there for 15, 20 minutes while they hash it out. And it should be pushed off to a regular meeting instead. So we should try to avoid having separate items on that. And just especially when we have how many people will it be? Up to fifteen. Maybe fifteen. Up to, but, but although they didn't have all three, all five from um, Saxon Road last last time, but uh, it could be quite lengthy if you have to get into the yep. joints. All right, um, that would take us. Are we all set on the next two meetings? Okay. All right, we review and approve the orders, bills, and warrants. I need a motion for that. I move that we approve the uh, orders, bills, and warrants. Second. Thank you. Any more? Conversation on those. Okay. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh, aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Jim McAuliffe, aye. Jeff Dunbar, aye. Stephen Golick, aye. Deborah Wright, aye. Wade Michaud, aye. Thank you. Okay. We cast. Any other business? Let's see. Let's start with you, Scott. No. All set. Wait. All right. Just gonna thank. I uh, just wanted to thank the folks that did turn out for the annual meeting as well as the follow-up week for voting and for regardless of who they voted for that they participated and was positive. And I would just say that um, that we will, at least I know I will promise to do um, due diligence to make sure that we have a lot of information out there as soon as we can on Village um, annual meeting in the future, and also trying to make sure that regular meetings are posted as well. So, um, on at least by social media and other things, um, so that we can get more participation. If people want to speak about items on our agendas, they should make sure to attend. Uh, I'm sure they think about it when they're watching it on Fact TV, but that's not helpful after the fact. So, um, please come to the meetings. Stephanie. Also, thank you. Jeff. 
Also, Jake, do you have anything else? Uh, no, just again, thank the voters for their support. And uh, uh, that's it. Thank you. Well, there being no need for an executive session, I uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. And we can call the aye. Jeff Dunbar, aye. Look at. Have a right eye. Wait, Michelle, eye. It is unanimous. Thank you, and good night.